Well, as you can see, Sheldon and Baby adopted a new puppy. And his name is Shithead. The house is disa a disaster. He tore it up pretty good. <coughs> um, I have left with this. And they wonder why I'm going deaf. I left this uh, black box on, hooked up, for two weeks. About two weeks. And uh, I disconnected these. So this is the PT80 port, ADP port for the EP Ever uh, tracer. 60 amp, 60 amp. Uh, I left them hooked up to um, this and I disconnected these and it's been r running perfectly. I don't know if it's doing anything, but it's running perfectly. Um, it's about 8 a.m., 8.30, something like that. We have 55 amps. Where'd it go? We have 55 amps going into the batteries. Right there. And we're charging on the 12 volt. Now the 12 volt had a problem while I was gone. The um, Sheldon, don't eat the puppy. Sheldon, or that's not Sheldon, that's baby. Baby, don't eat the puppy. <clears throat> okay, come on, everybody out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Yay, I got rid of him. Uh, the 12 volt had a problem while we were gone, while I was gone, and I'll show you what that was. But it has nothing to do with anything in here, nothing at all. Let's go outside, and it is nice out. It's like 38 degrees. I mean, short sleeves. <coughs> There's Sheldon in the window. Down here at the water tank, the rainwater tank, um, this filter plugged, which, you know, we were expecting that. But unfortunately, I didn't bring any spare filters. The water tank over there is about 95% full. And this is full to about right here. So when this plugged, it stopped pumping, which caused the pump to stay on. It's on right now, we got it on auto. So that pump won't stop until I either turn it off here, or this tank is within about a eight, eight to 10 inches from the bottom. That's the way I got it set up. So we're okay, I would like to pump the rest of that water into there and just top it off, shut this off and let this fill up, but it's not going to happen that way because I don't have a spare filter. I do think it would be cheaper. These are like almost $15 a piece. I have to write down the number. Don't let me forget to write down the number so that I can take this uh, and buy a bunch of these, but it would be actually cheaper to get another one of these. These are 500, uh, whatever it is, and this is a 500, whatever it is. <clears throat> but we are right about here on the level on this. It's really full. I gotta check the propane. Oh gosh, we still have 40%. Should probably buy some while it's cheap. Gas prices are down to $2 a gallon or less here, which is a good thing. I'm going to walk around to the garage and show you what I've done. <coughs> These are getting pretty bad. I can only work a couple hours a day 
on this stuff. Sue came down. Uh, I got all this hooked up. I need to do some work right here. But we have lights in the garage. Need to get some, change out some extension cords and stuff. Got all this finished. I ran all the lighting stuff in conduit. This group here is switched. All of these are switched. This one is not switched. This one is for the camera, which is right up there. I also put a a solar light in. You can see it up there, so when we drive in at night, it'll turn on. <coughs> and then here, with all the motorcycles, there's the fuse box. Need to work on that a little bit more. Need to finish these. We have lights and a crooked shelf. So the next step, I'm going to put another layer of plywood on this going east and west instead of north and south to help seal up these cracks because they're pretty big. I'm not a carpenter. <coughs> if I could afford that uh, heavy matting material, the rubber, I would put that down. It would actually be better but it's really expensive. I can get plywood for $13 a sheet. We're going to take these KLRs back with us when we go back and uh, do some riding. It really got dusty sitting out there. <clears throat> but this will really help once we get all this stuff uh, sorted out and get some stuff out of the house, which is almost an emergency. Um, things will be a lot better. Get some shelves in here. Don't know whether to make shelves or buy shelves. I think it's just as expensive either way. But uh, some of these tools I'm going to hang on the wall. Find some place to hang them. <clears throat> some of these tools could actually go up on the ceiling. I put the drywall lift up there. I cannot find the key to the four-wheeler. I have torn this place apart looking for the key. But in that box of my, uh, in that box there, the one that says Glock on it, there is a spare complete key system because this one here really needs to be replaced. That won't be an issue. <clears throat> we had an inspector come out about a week week ago, week and a half ago, and he walked around taking pictures and apparently it was good enough for insurance. So it got insurance on it. Yay. So we're darn near done. There's no more heavy work. Thank goodness. I've had to get a lot of help a lot of times to help with some of the heavy stuff. My knees just won't handle it. You can see the lights up there, those are the cheap old lights that you get on uh, Amazon from China that uh, if they work, they work, if they don't, they don't. And I need about a two to three foot extension cord for them up there and they plug into each other. And I'm going to put two more, those are east and west, uh, two more over here going north and south. There'll be one there and one there, kind of all the way down on this beam and all the way down on that far beam down there. What else? I just can't wait to get some stuff into that shed off of the floor and be able to use this garage. A lot of this is going to go back to Rollins. Um, I rebuilt my bathroom there. I broke my 40 meter ham radio antenna. So I'm going to see if I can get this one back to town without tearing it up. I never have had much luck with that one, but never know. 
and I have spares. <clears throat> that one, I, I, that big one there, I can't get the SWR down on it. And uh, the lowest I can get on that is two to one. But if I can, when I can afford it, I'm going to buy a Tar Heel, little Tar Heel two antenna for the truck. It's a, it's a automatic antenna that you can buy. They're like five hundred and fifty dollars. But that's what we've done in here. I go back there and shut that light off, and <clears throat> I got a mouse burrowing under there. I'm not seeing any signs of any vermin in in here at all, which is good. Shut that light off. Okay. I need to bring a lot of bricks down the pavers for this side. You can see my conduit there. I need to put down pavers and I need to install a gutter and see if I can find a way to save the water. Might just pick up two of the 300 gallon tanks and put them at each corner and then figure out how to pump it all the way to the front or use the use them for irrigation once I get everything finished here everything finished I don't want anything else to do on the house I'm going to start working on uh, planning stuff It looks like I got a little runoff right there. <clears throat> definitely, absolutely, definitely need gutters on this because it really comes off of that torrentially. So, not a lot of information on this one. Basically, just wanted to show you the new Sheldon and Baby Squeaky Toy and uh, that I did actually have an issue with the 12 volt. Now the 12 volt never dropped below, even with the pump running all night long, uh, it never dropped below 12 volts. I don't know if you can see that or not. But the batteries never dropped below 12 volts. That's these two batteries here. Now, I still need to run some conduit here. There's a lot of little stuff. And the little stuff, there's a lot of little stuff. Let's just leave it at that. I need to take some of these home back to wherever it is I'm going. I think I will do that today. Gather up some of those and take them back. Because I'm going to need ground wires. A lot of ground wires when I put that tar heel antenna on. I've got to have both ends on them. These are all heavy braided. There's four of them. That ought to be enough. I didn't even think about using these. Cool. Okay, these are all soldered on and heavy braided. There's a black one. I'm going to take that black one. Take them in the bedroom there and put them on the bed and see which ones are best. Okay. <clears throat> Grounding is very, very, very important. Every part of your um, car, everything, the doors, the hood, the bed to the frame, the body to the frame, everything has to be heavily grounded when you're running HF or you have high SWR. So, that's enough for this video.
Let's see if the attack dogs are in here. There's Baby, there's Sheldon, there's Attack Dog. All right. Good morning, boys and girls. There's Sheldon, Baby. Hi, Baby. Uh, been about a month, month and a half since I did a video, maybe a little bit more. Um, I, I'm gonna answer, try and answer a question. I don't know if I can or not. But anyhow, um, about a month and a half ago, we decided to try this thing out, and I really didn't think it was working worth a hoot. But what I did was take both of the MT-50s offline and hook everything else up here, just like it's supposed to be normally. Um, what you have to do, it's working perfectly now. It's just exactly the way it's supposed to. This is the PT-80P port. And <clears throat> I like the MT-50s a lot better than this. But everything's working very, very efficiently. It seems to be working just exactly the way it's supposed to now. Um, this is the second module. This one here has two, 235 watts. Or this is connected to 235 watt panels, and it has eight of them. This one here is connected to 300 watt panels, and it has eight of them. <coughs> Excuse me. But anyhow, this one here will charge and charge and charge. This one here will come down to zero, just exactly like it's supposed to. So right now, we're charging on the solar at nine point what is that nine point oh eight amps it's it's about ten thirty I think ten twenty five in the morning and this one here if I look at it it's at point two amps is what this one's charging at and this one's charging at nine point four so this one here will shut down and not charge unless I start a draw. So this one here does all the work, 235 watt panels. This one's doing all the work. And this one here basically shuts down. Um, the 12 volt system works basically the same, but um, they're a little bit more even. This one here may shut down, this one here will shut down if they're both charging evenly. But remember, this one here is on the west side of the house, and this one here is on the east side of the house. So if they're charging evenly, you'll see that one of them cycle off and on and off and on and off and on. That's the way they're supposed to work. So everything's working pretty much exactly the way it's supposed to. I'm really happy with the system now. I need to go in and straighten up these two wires if I'm going to leave it this way. But I, like I say, most everybody likes using the, uh, whatever these things are, MT-50s, a lot better than um, this. But what I'm finding is the efficiency level has improved. <clears throat> I can watch this one. And uh, this one here just really does not do much work at all. I, I'm really contemplating on going ahead and adding the rest of my batteries out here. I need to extend this bench a little bit, but set this side up over here as a 48 volt system also, and then I'll have double the battery capacity. Uh, but that's about it for this. It's working really, really, really well. I'm happy with it, for sure. Um, having trouble talking. My tongue doesn't feel right. I don't know why. But anyhow, that's how that all works. Now, everything in, in the question that was asked, it was asked about parallel and, uh, what is it? Parallel and series. So, what I have here is I have four panels in series and four panels in series. So these are all 300 watt panels. 
So this is 11, 12, 13, 14. So they are, where are they? I don't know where they're at. <clears throat> huh. Anyhow, 11, 12, 13, and 14 are connected together here somewhere. And uh, I know where it is. It's up on the roof. Okay, so 11, 12, 13, and 14 are connected in series on the roof. 15, 16, 17, 18 are connected in series on the roof. And the two pairs are connected in parallel. So they come into the house in parallel into one wire. So it's coming down to here. So this is the end, and this is the end. And they go up on up to the charger, controller. So you have 13, 14, 15, 11, 12, 13, 14 in series, and 15, 16, 17, and 18 in series in parallel. So that's where you get, you got 48 volt here and 48 volt here. Really, when there's no load, let's see if I can find that on here. When there's no load being uh, charged, I'm charged. I have 120, 112 volts right here right now between these two. There's 112 volts coming in, and this of course breaks it down to 48 and charges the batteries and all that neat stuff. This one here, I have. Let's see. I'm charging at 7.7 .7 amps, and I have 58 volts coming in. So here, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are in series, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are in series, in parallel, coming into the rest of this garbage. So that's how all that works. And these here are 19 and 20 are in parallel going into this one and one and two are in parallel coming into this one I have 265 watt and 265 watt so that's how that all works